Hey y'all, and welcome to Reed's channel. So as you probably guessed by the title of this video, we're going to be talking about Crab A disease, specifically what it is, how you get it, um, how it's diagnosed, signs and symptoms, treatment, and then prognosis. So Crab A is considered an autosomal recessive disorder. Basically what that means is it's inherited. You get one copy from your father and one copy from your mother. And Will and I are both carriers. So we had no idea that we were carriers of this disease until Reed was diagnosed. And um, there were no signs for us because Crab A is caused by a GAL-C deficiency. And GAL-C is an abbreviation for a really long word and it's an enzyme that breaks down the um, toxins and fat accumulation in your brain. And when that enzyme doesn't work well, you basically get brain degeneration, which is what Reed has. So basically out of, <laughs> I hate to say it this way, out of 7 billion people, Will and I somehow found each other. Everyone has about five to 10 bad recessive genes. And um, Will and I just happen to share the same one. And so um, out of any offspring that was conceived by the two of us, we had a 75% chance of having a perfectly healthy child. Um, and then a 25% chance of having a child with Crab A. So what ends up happening with Crab A is if you're a carrier like me, I have one good enzyme from either my mom or my dad and then one bad enzyme from my mom or my dad. What happens is when the bad enzyme isn't working well to get rid of the toxins in my brain, my good enzyme picks up the slack. And so I don't have any signs or symptoms of degeneration. And it's the same thing for Will. He either got, um, he got one good copy and one bad copy. And when his bad copy doesn't work well, his good copy picks up the slack. So there's no problem. With Reed, he ended up getting the bad copy for me. Oops. <laughs> He ended up getting the bad copy from me and then the bad copy from Will. So he got a double whammy. So he doesn't have a good enzyme to pick up the slack. And because he lacks that enzyme, lipids and fat just builds up in his brain and his body has no way to rid itself of that. And when that happens, um, basically you have a coating around your nerves. And I think about it like a cable wire where you have, um, wires inside and then the cable is the insulation around it and it allows those wires to transmit signals. So the coating around the nerves is called the myelin sheath and it's um, a big long fatty layer that insulates these nerves and as the nerves send impulses from one to the other it allows that conductivity. Well when Reed's enzymes don't work and that that fat accumulates it breaks down that coating and so what you ultimately have are exposed nerves so they're not able to conduct properly and that's where you get the regression and um so i guess i'll go into how it's diagnosed next um they diagnosed reed by an mri because when he started having regression he um, stopped being able to sit up unassisted. He stopped being able to hold a bottle. He wasn't, by 12 months, he wasn't walking, talking, or crawling. And so we knew something was wrong. So eventually they ordered an MRI. And the MRI is um, a visual scan of the brain. And in his MRI, it showed deterioration of parts of it. And so right off the bat, they knew that we were dealing with some type of leukodystrophy. Leukodystrophy just means, in his case, the breakdown of white matter. And his white matter in his brain is, as those impulses can't conduct, that white matter kind of dies. And that's why he's losing a lot of his abilities and will continue to lose his abilities um, until he passes away. So, 
Um, that's how it's diagnosed. What were the other ones? Oh, signs and symptoms. So once again, Reed had a lot of regression and is still regressing. But one of the most common signs, and I think probably one of the earliest, is um, constant irritability. Just absolutely cannot be consoled, it's crying, screaming for no reason. And you know, you check their temperature, and you've you know you you've just gone the whole nine yards, and you know that nothing is outwardly wrong. Um, the other one was regression. So if they've started crawling and then they stop. If they've started walking and then they stop and they don't trade trade up that skill for um, a more complex skill then that's something to look into um, motor skill delays speech delays uh, what were some other things there were just so many like loss of balance um, and there's a whole list of them but the ones that come to my mind the most for Reed were the he wasn't reaching his milestones after like six months they just kind of stopped and then um as the disease progressed he lost his balance he would just tip over he couldn't sit up couldn't hold a bottle and um now as it's progressed he can't eat can't drink um you know he never really talked so he, he's still not talking so those are some of the signs and symptoms the treatment and this is where it just gets like even more heartbreaking is crab A can be picked up on a newborn screen test. The problem is only a handful of states offer it. So um, when they do the newborn screen, they I think they prick their heel and they draw blood and they run it for all kinds of diseases and abnormalities. Reed showed up for none of them. He was born a perfectly healthy baby. He was full term, um, no complications, no issues. And I had all of the fetal scans done. I had all of the, um, I had great prenatal care. Uh, we had all of the screens done right after he was born. Everything was fine. We had no idea. And so when they do the ne newborn screen test and they prick their heel, I think it might be more than four, but the four that come to mind are um, New York for sure, Kentucky for sure. I think the other two are Missouri and Ohio, but I could be wrong about that, and there could have been more listed since when he was diagnosed a few months ago. But um, Reed was born in Hawaii, and so Hawaii does not test for Crab A. Going back to treatment, this is where it ties in, is for the most part, um, there is a stem cell transplant that can be done, and to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about that procedure. I could probably do the research and talk to other Crab A parents and make a video on that. But because it wasn't an option for us, I really don't know that much about it. What I do know is that it was not available for Reed when he was diagnosed at 13 months. Um, it has to be diagnosed within the first 30 days of birth or before they start showing signs and symptoms for that child to be, most of the time, for that child to be a candidate of stem cell transplant. Um, like I said, I don't really know the science behind that. Um, the only thing I can think is that maybe as the brain is already starting to deteriorate, that the stem cells at that point wouldn't help. I don't know. I know that Reed was not a candidate. The problem with that is that like Will and I, most people don't know their carriers. And if you don't know you're a carrier and your state just doesn't test for a super rare genetic disease, why would you ever just randomly ask for your child to be tested? So that's the problem we ran into. Um, and it's still hard to talk about because there's a chance that he could have been saved had Hawaii tested for this. So that's still just really hard to wrap my mind around. Um, I would have to do a different video on the stem cell transplant because I'm not even going to go into that in this because I don't know enough about it, to be honest. So moving on, the prognosis. There are four different types of Crab A. There is um, early infant, late onset or late infancy diagnosis, uh, juvenile, and um, adult onset. Reed was technically diagnosed as late infant onset. We kind of go back and forth. I think he's right on the borderline. Um, I think 
I think it's possible that he was early infant, but um, he didn't start really regressing until about, I guess they're calling it 12 or 13 months when he started losing his balance. So the prognosis for that, for late infant onset, is about two years after diagnosis. Um, expected death within two years of diagnosis. So they're anticipating that Reed probably won't make it to his third birthday. Um, the earlier it's noticed, the earlier the signs and symptoms appear, the shorter the, um, what am I trying to say? The, the shorter the lifespan is typically how that works. Although it's such, it's just such a unique disease because I'm part of a community that, um, I'm part of a Crab A community and some of those kids were diagnosed at like three months and they're still alive at like four and five years. And then other kids were diagnosed at six months and had passed away within that same year. So it's just, I think that a lot of it depends on where it starts in the brain and how quickly it progresses. And I'm not, I almost don't want to go here with it because I'm not a scientist. I don't know that much about it. But Will and I were talking about it and Will does have a strong background in science. And um, his theory is that the percentage at which our bad enzymes work are what Reed got. So what am I trying to say? So say that my worst copy out of the two works at 14% then whichever one is the highest out of Will's worst copy and my worst copy is the one that's gonna work for Reed the best. I don't know if that makes sense because it's kind of confusing, but say that out of the two of us, Reed got my copy and say it works at 14% of, the enzyme works at 14% of breaking down the fat, and then say that Will's worst copy that Reed got works at 20%. Then his theory is that the 20% is going to take over for the 14% and is going to um, pick up that slack. But because it only works at 20%, it's not going to be able to break down the fats enough to keep Reed alive. And so that's kind of the theory that we're under, the impression that we're under, because there's just not a lot of information, which is the main reason that I wanted to start this YouTube. when. Um, when Reed was diagnosed, there was just really nothing out there. There was not a lot of information. There was really just nowhere to go and no one to ask. And out of all the doctors we've had, and we've had dozens, until we got to Texas and met a specialist, we hadn't even met a doctor who had ever seen a case of Crab A. We'd never met a nurse who had seen a case of Crab A. And so what ended up happening is we would go to meet with medical specialists and these doctors and nurses would ask us what crab a was and when i tell you that there is nothing that will make you feel more helpless than a doctor asking you as a patient or as the parent of a patient about your child's disease it was heartbreaking was just the worst and um, just the worst, one of the worst things I can imagine. And so I found myself thinking, well, if I can educate people or just help other parents compare signs and symptoms and open up a discussion where we can share things, then that's what I wanted to do and that's why I wanted to start this. Um, I think I've covered a lot of what I wanted to cover. I'm sure when I edit this, I'll think of like a million other things that I left out. But I think those are the basics. And maybe as I become more educated about this disease, as we go through Reed's journey, um, I can make an update to this video and, um, and maybe give some more information. But I think those are pretty much the basics. And by all means, if anyone out there sees this, and if you have anything to add, please do, because I'm so interested in learning as much as I can about 
what's going on with Reed and um, and what the time that he has left is going to be like. So please communicate with me if you have anything else, any more information that you could add. And thank you so much.